Just good evening. At 7 o'clock, we have a forum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is John Resky and Rich Kump. Yes. Yes, that's okay. us. That's From us. UMass Credit Union. Yes. Um, my name is Rich Kump. I'm the uh, president and CEO of UMass Live College Credit Union. And we have, for years, our board has been trying to get a, have us get a directional uh, sign, not, not a stop sign or anything, uh, near Westgate Center Drive because we're set back off of uh, Russell Street. And so we finally have gone through the process to do that. Um, we have got the, uh, the approval of the landowner um, and a licensing agreement with the lessee, which is Staples, to put a five by three foot sign that says UMass 5 and, a, and an arrow just to point uh, this is the way you turn. Um, we have uh, John here has worked with, uh, I think it's Tim, your building inspector, uh, to work out all the details of dig safe and, um, and all that. And so uh, we are looking for a permit to put up that sign. This will be, you got to, yes. where is it going to be? Sure. Well, it's yeah, John, you take yeah. here. Sure. You did all the yeah. work on this. I just get to share the good news, right? <laughs> So, um, we've been working on this for a couple of months. And like half a year. This is an example of the sign that we're looking for. Um, I have another one of those. This is the location of that sign on that particular lot. i got another sign here for you. Um, this is the plot plan. And, and if you know where Westgate Center Drive and Russell meet, we're talking about a sign that is 30 feet in from the sidewalk of Route 9 and 30 feet in from Westgate Center Drive. If you notice, there's like a uh, hydrant there very close, and that's uh, we're sort of in, in, in front of that. Um, and it's five foot wide by three foot, uh, five foot long by three foot wide. It's not illuminated, uh, and it's a pure directional sign. It's got on the same side on on both sides with the with the arrows. Is there a locust map showing exactly where the sign is? I have this. And you do you see the little where this is uh, Westgate Center Drive? Yep. That's us. Applebee's, Staples. Yep. And the sign would be right there, thirty feet in and then thirty feet in. Okay. Or or approximately where wherever that would work. <laughs> we have a licensing agreement from Staples to use that prop to use that location and they're allowing us to put a sign up. We have our permit laid out along with our fee with that. And it's a Spagnoli signs doing that job, John? Yeah, Agnoli sign yeah. out of um, out of spring. Yep. This is not, well it is an unusual request, but it's not unusual. Uh, in as much as that people want to buy property off of Route 9, yet they want to have recognition on Route 9. So does that mean that everyone is going to have a directional s sign that has property, for example, on Bay Road, and they would want to put one on, on Route 9? So there is a concern here. So mm -hmm. it's not an automatic. And 3x5 is not a, it's, it's, it's a pretty good size sign. It's not a directional sign. It's uh, it's more almost like a small billboard. So uh, I'd like to hear what some of the other people have to say. And you've done all the all your homework properly. There's no question about it. Okay, thank you. Never, I've never seen anything like this come before us. That no, I mean, have show some, we have to show some way. I mean, it it to has this been an issue for how long you've been there now? Uh, we've been there for a while and it has been an issue. We've just bringing it up now, uh -huh. to be very honest with you. More recently, we've had members, potential, or potential yeah. members, when they've come in, have said, you know, we couldn't quite find you, yeah. but we found yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, we're not the only business people who can't yeah. find sure. you. Sure, without question. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yes. I was claiming exemption on the Dover Amendment. 
Okay. Did you all scope in his job? <laughs> <laughs> so Jim and I have been looking at the bylaw, and the threshold problem is the bylaw requires the signs be on your property. Correct, yes, and that's the reason why Tim sent us to the planning board, was that he, he said that this is not on your property. Our property is down the street, right. probably, I don't know, six, seven hundred feet, right. maybe. Mm -hmm. On the other side of the street, uh, it's not on the same side as Staples. Uh, and, and having gone through this with Tim, that's why he recommended that we come to the planning board to do yeah. that. He felt you, you, you probably he, will need a zoning variance from the Zoom Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay. Because we have in our section 7.4.8, which has non permitted signs, specifically says off premise signs are not allowed. Can you tell me that section again, please? 7.4.8. Okay. And the exact number is 7.4.8.5 off premise signs are prohibited so you need to be we're trying to look around but there's, there's no place else in the bylaw that says anything about directional signs being allowed or anything like that mm -hmm. there's that. one problem too you've got three or four banks commercial banks on route nine they pay taxes they do business and, they're com and you're competing with them and you don't pay any taxes so this is an issue this is uh, just a um, we we pay property taxes. We pay property we taxes. Pay property. We, we, we don't withhold anything you don't, you don't from the town of Hadley. Yeah. No, you don't, you don't pay any uh, state. It's not a tip. It's complete. It's just assessed value property tax. Mm -hmm. No, but they don't. You're what paying tax taxes on your property. No state tax, right? No, we are. What kind, we of, are benefits, what kind, of, what kind of benefits do you have from being a cow? Okay, I well, so that's, that's, that's a real. That's, 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 well, we're talking about signs. You're talking about signs. That's an irrelevant. Well, this is this is an advertisement, as far as I'm concerned. Um. So. Mass Highway does have a program which allows you to put up a directional sign. You've seen them mm -hmm. like pointing towards the Yiddish Book Center, Eric Carle Museum. Uh, they will put that up on their right of way and they're, they are exempt from our zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. okay. So that is a way to get a directional sign. Mm -hmm that is maybe the more effective way to get a directional sign. Okay. Um, John, didn't you go to uh, state? Uh, only to know that where the uh, right of way was on right now, and not specifically for that, for that uh, opportunity. So they, they do have a specific program, which is why people who are off Route 9 have been able to get signs. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and there, there's a limit on how many they'll do, but I don't think they're oversaturated in that area. But um, yeah, we'll talk to the building inspector. Uh, maybe he, you know, we really don't have any variance authority uh, within this. I mean, we, we have some discretionary authority, but you know, how does it look? Does it look like uh, too much, yeah, too little? Sure. Um, but if you go to the state, it might take you two more years. So. Yeah. Um, well, that's something they can decide yeah. on, either a zoning variance or the statement. Yeah. And the state may also have a, a standard on sign size, uh -huh. mm -hmm. but you know. But they do. They they will they will give you their yeah, standard sign, their standard sign, right. which will be directional, mm -hmm. but it will not be advertising. If this is on Staples property, wouldn't this be counted against Staples allowed signage? Square footage? Yeah, yeah, that would actually be a second uh, pylon sign yeah. at Staples. Yeah. Does directional count towards uh, signage? Directional well, directions for your property. So, and they're usually a lot smaller, like entrance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. not this is more. Your, so your signage within your property, saying this way to the ATM and so on, mm -hmm. is right. is exempt as directional, but you still run into that hard prohibition uh, off premises off signs premises, are created. Right, right, it's clear. So, so, and I think there are, let's see, where does it say? There is, uh, is it, um, if I have a building on a corner and I allow, what, 64 square feet? Yeah. Yes. Then is everyone allowed 64 square feet on my property? Yeah. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, Usually, when we talk about signs, there's kind of a canned speech I have. 
Steigers, Elneys, Zeers, Wolkos had huge signs. They're no longer in business. Signs really don't make the business. It's good service. Yeah, I think we did have a specific language about uh, directional signs, but that comes somewhere out of the. Yeah, yeah. like the encyclopedia. Yeah, but um, but yeah, that's that's your that's your threshold problem: seven point four point eight point five. Okay, very good. Then. We will uh, pursue. Now, a variance, what's unique and special about the only thing that's unique in variance is that they're so far off of the road, so recessed. That's I'm, not, I'm just, I'm just, no, that's not one, one of the reasons they, they get can, a variance. They can make their case. If no one appeals yes. it, they have, they have legal spots only. Yes. Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for the for direction, sharing. so to speak. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is that mine as well? Why is he saying that? No, we don't need a friend here at this point. Thank you again for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. You want to do things the right way. I hate to be the Grinch that spoils the 4th of July. It's a process, right? So, thank you. Michael Brewster? Yes. I'm with Barlow Science uh, representing 110 Grill. And we're looking to they're looking to open up down the road and they're looking to install some uh, building signage. Actually it's just one sign over the main entrance. <coughs> I also brought some photos so that uh, you guys could get an understanding of how the signs will generally look. These are a little different because these are actually um, halo lit. They're not going to be the lighting you'll see in the night shots on these. Okay. These are backlit signs? Correct. Okay. So these are other locations we've done. Okay, so what? I mean, you, we've got a whole bunch of different signs here. It's actually Same. one. It's just another page showing the breakdown of how we build it. Oh, okay. That's all. So this um, is going to go on. It's going to go on the curved canopy. Okay, and on the uh, right, 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 right at the side. main entrance of the building. And it's right. going to be roughly uh, two foot by, it's called seventeen foot, but the yeah. numbers. Yeah. Okay. It's LED illuminated. Yeah. Um, How it's illuminated from the back is it's irrelevant. Uh, back, some communities like to know it's LED because I, I'm not sure if it has to do with their energy codes or, or what the yeah, case we don't, may we be. Don't, we don't. Put that. I mean, as long as it's not Victorian illuminated and backlit or overhead lit. And it's not, uh, the only thing about it, um, it's hard to determine from any picture, but we have seen sometimes backlit signs where the halo is so bright, it lights up the, the area. That's why these ones have backers, and, and I've seen the same thing, they'll put so much lighting into them that you're almost lighting the entire wall. Right, and that's what we want, you know, and it's hard to determine, just be aware that if you do that, we'll require you to mute it down. Okay, I'll make a note just so that my okay. office is aware as well. Okay, because the uh, Texas Roadhouse did that. They put so much light on the building, it was all external, but, I mean, <laughs> it was bright. Bright in the street lights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, when you go down Route 9 in front of Texas Roadhouse, you definitely look like daylight. And it's it muted it down, it's much nicer. Yeah, I mean, we can test it out. Dimmers are easy to install. Nowadays, right. they, they tie it right in with the drivers. So. Yeah, okay. When are you planning open? Well, it's still under construction. The exterior is not even ready for us to come down to look at to get ready for production. So I'm not sure the exact timeline they have. Okay. But I know we have property owner approval as well. Yeah, we should keep one. one you of, so you got We're out of Hudson, New Hampshire. Let's get, you get that one set. Okay. okay. All right. So I'll make a motion uh, to approve the light lighting plan for 110 Grill. Uh, subject to review for uh, ultimate brightness. Put Tim and uh, my standard note on there. Mm -hmm. you, you don't let him, you don't, yeah. 
on the other rational side. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Got the size. Right. Yes, I do. Well, we just uh, put another set of plants to yeah. another set of. Oh, I'll just take that. mics. You don't need to put that. Anyway, that's the motion uh, okay. to uh, approve it subject to final review, further review upon installation. Okay. Second. Well, motion, any, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Great, thank you. What's your address? Uh, 158 Greeley Street. G oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 335 Russell. Are you going to have any? You're not going to have any road sign. Could be so close to the road, right? Correct. As far as I'm aware, this is the only signage we're looking to go for. Things, the new buildings, that okay. for the most part, are built, but I don't think they have finished their exterior yet. Yeah, the owner from the wall came in a couple of weeks ago, and he was one of the owner of the 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 mall, the mall itself. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. And you, you want that for the file? I put that into the file. I'll put this. Yeah. Well, this can go to the Bob Bronze file. Okay. And that can go to Kevin. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a copy and come get a copy. Yeah. Very good. Mr. Iser. Yes. In our plan. 78 to 80 Russell Street. This is the old Winnipeg house. Okay. Right next to Dion Flooring. And we're doing a couple of things here. So let me get these spread out and then we will discuss. Okay. I'm going to give one to John. Be actively involved. I have shown on this plan lot one and total new lot area. So what's happening is the Winnikoski or the 78 to 80 Russell Street property consists of the frontage on Russell Street. It comes back and wraps around behind two properties shown as Spence and Pioneer Valley Rental. Pioneer Valley Rental currently owns this whole thing, plus they own this on a separate deed. So what I'm doing is cutting out this lot one. The abutter is intending to buy this. This is a pre-existing non-conforming lot, meaning it does not have enough frontage and it does not have the 150 foot square ability to fit in here. It does have more than enough area. We are not in the Aquifer Protection District, so we need 30,000 square feet. The only issue I have is when I'm creating a, this line, I have to be 15 feet away from this garage in order to comply with the side yard setback. I intended to use that existing pin and run the line back, but it's too close to the garage, so I had to kick the line over three feet to make sure that we were the 15 feet away from the garage. So, I've got more than enough area. I have less than enough frontage, but again, it's pre-existing, and the box doesn't fit in. But again, that's pre-existing. So then, you're gonna, oh, they own this. They 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 now own this whole parcel. Yeah, they own everything. But there's two. There's this parcel, which is one deed, and this parcel, which is another. So the second thing I'm doing is taking all of this and combining it into one. One. Okay. So that they get one tax bill instead of two. And this will be, that's the, that's the new size including this? Correct. Okay. Okay. Is that 
Yeah. Well, they're again pre-existing systems. Both, both of them are pre-existing. But this this one does have enough problems. Yeah. Now, from a technical point of view, are we making a pre-existing non-conforming use more non-conforming by reducing the amount of acreage or the square footage? Not as I understand it. Is the uh, conforming means we have. 30,000 square feet. So if we go below 30,000 square feet, then yes, I am making it more non I would make it more non-conforming, but since I'm staying above that threshold, I don't believe that there's an issue there. Certainly we're cutting down the lot size, but it's still bigger than now. Is there going to be any change of use? No. Not that I'm aware it's of. Be a hoe? I believe so. Now, if they if they come in for a business they have the parking they, yeah. you know. Th this is going to be well depending I mean if they just use the existing bill they have enough parking these people now have they've got more than a parking for a business there is a business here now right. there's a computer something or other yeah. operation here I don't know what if Dion's going to want to use this to expand his business at some point in time or it just wants the the rental. I mean, I, he's got a shed right now that's hanging over the line. And so I know he's concerned get about that. There's plenty of room. Yeah, plenty yeah. of room. Yeah. 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 So, but obviously it would involve coming back before the board and meeting all the, the site plan approval criteria. Okay. I mean, it, it conforms to zoning, zoning the way I see it as best as it can. Massachusetts law, and no one else does it this way, but a division of land where there is minimum required frontage on an existing public way is not a quote unquote subdivision. It's just a division. But then there's only two states or three states in the whole union that have one. And all you're do all you're signing off on is the fact that this is not a definitive subdivision. And that it conforms to zoning. Not even that. It doesn't have to. There's, there, I can bring you a plan that does not conform to zoning, but it does. Because if you look under where you sign, it does say that this does not mean it complies with zoning. How long has it been since we added that, Randy? Oh, a long time, Joe. Yeah. In fact, I think you probably still have a uh, stamp in the office for, uh, <laughs> to add that. Actually, you guys do. Oh, this, is, this is the money. Yes. And every town has their own little or way they want it to be. Okay, somebody's got to be ready to and put the date on that one. Oh. Jim keeps two copies, and one goes to the assessor's office, so they can. And one goes in our file. Yeah. Do you want digital of this, Bill? Uh, yeah. Why don't you send it along? We'll, we're starting to accumulate them. All right. So I'll scan it and send it to you with all these signatures on it. All right. That's all I have okay. this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Come on down. Desk. <laughs> <laughs> At my uh, previous job um, as the town planner, I uh, 
always just stood because there was no space for me at the table. So I would like go behind the board or in front of the board. And uh, it was just always kind of awkward, you know, when the audience would be looking and I wouldn't be sitting on the board. So, um, Where were the previous job? I was the town planner for the town of Southbridge. Oh, okay. um, and um, I was uh, both the town planner and the conservation agent um, there. And then um, PVPC, because it's on the, the side of the state that I want to live in, yeah. um, had a open position and doing land use and zoning, which I thought was a kind of a perfect fit based on my previous experience. Um, so what I have before you is a draft of the 2020 work plan. Um, you know, this, this includes the MS Floor Permit, which we're currently working on. Um, uh, as I mentioned last, at the last meeting with Patty, um, who was, uh, will be helping start the process uh, with, the, with the series of meetings with the committee to look at the MS Floor Permit. Um, of which Jim belongs to. Um, I'm hoping that we can start those meetings, I believe, Jim, the 17th? No, 19th. 19th. 19th, I um, got Which is a Wednesday during the day. Two weeks from tomorrow. Yeah. So um, once we confirm that, that will be the first meeting looking um, at the, the, the language within both the general bylaw and the zoning bylaw. Um, I think just a quick summary of where Patty um, and I guess staff may have worked with you maybe a year and a half ago um, or worked with someone. I think it was the DPW director and the town administrator um, in looking at compliance with the MS4 permit. There, there was a separate grant. Okay, yes. That did... Um, I came to a couple of those meetings, okay. but it was primarily run through DPW. Okay. And, but they were gathering copies of everything, okay. zoning bylaws, subdivision regulations. So yeah, I think that's that'll probably be the starting point, and I'll share that with um, Jim. And you know, I think if the board wants to look at that, um, just for you know um, information, uh, there are comments from previous staff work on compliance and suggestions to. Uh, work through the zoning bylaw right um, so just by way of background since, sure. um, so what it had come out of that grant was sort of a bullet list of things that needed to be done mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that was the extent of the grant okay um, shifting over taking off the that hat and putting on the technical the tech, put the contract hat we turned to PBPC through our contract okay. to actually provide the text to implement the bullet points. Okay. That went through a couple of hiccups because that came out just about the time Larry was leaving. Uh, we had um, someone came in. Susan? Yes. She, she was here for three months, two months. Yeah. Then there was, she left. There was a transitional guy who, yeah. uh, uh, who, <laughs> wasn't really uh, yeah. able to dig into all of this. And so I guess we've just been waiting for you. Um, but the idea is that th that was the difference, that the grant highlighted what needed to be done, okay. but we're using our contract with you to actually to, to do, do it. it. Okay. Um, yeah, so the, the committee work will be to develop that language, um, you know, with the context of the work that has been done. Right. Um, I, I do I, have a, a, a no news update. I did do my part of sending it all off to town council for his comments, but I did discover the town council is out for an extended period of time. Okay. So <laughs> he has not gotten back to me. But, okay, well, that's good to know. But um, he should be back by the time the okay. next event rolls around. Um, so I think the, the biggest question was that we were planning to adopt something by town meeting, a fall town meeting? That would be the okay. goal. So then that, um, and what time is it? What? For what, the MS4? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, that's, yeah the, uh, the fall town meeting, I think, the later October. Yeah, I think he said it was, did I write it down? Yeah, I wrote it down on here. 
I think he was thinking it was probably going to be about the 24th or 17th. Yeah, 24. Hmm? I have uh, a date that's circled. Okay. So I'm assuming that's it. 619 is the working group. Yes. Yeah, just for everybody's information, the working group will consist of myself, Tim Nyhart, uh, Chris Okafor, and uh, Greg Mish from the Board of Health, Chris Okafor from DPW, obviously Tim Lehart is Building Inspector, Janice Stone from Conservation, and that'll be it. Mm -hmm. so, so that's going to be kind of delineation of who will present what at the town meeting so that we have it all covered? Or is more it than likely the planning board will present everything. The idea of getting all of those groups together is because the general bylaw and what we understand so far will each have a piece of the pie for enforcement. Now, I'm not sure enforcement is the right word, as much as follow up and responsibility. Okay? And so to make sure that everybody buys in, yes, you know, that is our job. That is our job. We will do that. We can do that. We have, you know, whether they have to do that, we understand. We just want to make sure that everybody understands what the pieces are when it comes together. Because it's a general bylaw, is it going to require 50% majority? 50% rather than the and, and it will probably be a zoning facet yes. to it but we're not quite sure what that's going to be depending on what we find out from the okay. town council okay. yes um i i think patty has mentioned and i've seen in other towns that have adopted or um or in, amended um uh, like the illicit discharge erosion bylaws um they were done in the uh general bylaw, but then removed from the zoning bylaw. So if you're, you probably would require an amendment removing it right. from the zoning, but having the yeah. concurrent uh, general bylaw. Um, and then I guess we'd address anything that needed to be amended in the zoning bylaw at the same time. Right. Um, so if we just go back to um, task one, um, I took the 2019 scope of services, um, and I'll have a, a contract for you, Jim, at the next meeting. Okay. Um, if you know if this is okay with the, with the board, um, the definition section. So I think I gathered from the last meeting that um, your definitions are scattered throughout the separate sections, right? Um, was the intent to? just create a new definition section with consolidating everything or just kind of capturing the ones that are not captured elsewhere in the bylaw we are still discussing that okay. yeah I, 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 I will explain that this one we have to we have we have to agree on I think I don't think we're far off on how we want to do it, but I'm envisioning a new section of definitions. Okay. However, it's going to be. Uh -huh. It's going to be it's going to be difficult to put a new definition section in without having a new section, whatever it's going to call or be. And definitions, you know, I'm, I'm kind of on the same. I'm, I'm, I think I'm agreeing with Bill on this one. Definitions that are unique to the section, like solar. Right. Solar doesn't need to be a general. In a general section, it can be to the unique to the solar bylaw, um, as such as those would be in those sections. It's going to be, I mean, it's going to be a bit confusing, but to try to put them in one section, I think definition, I'm afraid, is going to be um, unmanageable. Mm -hmm. And in the definition section, we have stuff that is pertinent throughout the bylaw. Correct. What does sideline mean? What does height mean? What is well, structure? Height, mm -hmm. yeah. What does it mean? Well, those are things we got to discuss, uh, but at least they pertain throughout the bylaw. They're not unique to a section. They would be more common. I did watch yeah. that clip from two weeks ago. What does height mean to you? Is it, is it mean or is it the, top, the highest point? The way I've applied it when I was zoning enforcement was the highest point. Yeah, that's generally that's what, what we yeah, think, yeah. too. And I think yeah. that's generally what... I would think so, too. Um, yeah. You know. You know, you know what it, it, we also don't want to be, if we can avoid it, we would like to be kind of consistent with the building code. Sure. Okay. Yeah, so that probably would require some sort of engagement with the 
building official. Right. You know, because yeah. he is. Well, he Tim, Tim, is Tim, is, Tim has okay. been pushing hard for, for a definition section okay. for, for a, a number of years. And he's absolutely ecstatic that we're finally going to do something. Um, we had something almost ready a few years ago, and then we started looking at it. <clears throat> I mean, I think you probably got it in your archive yeah, someplace. Yeah, I, I took a look this afternoon. And, um, and, and, and we found some problems with it. Okay. However, <clears throat> okay, so there's problems with it. Well, well, let's fix the problems and get it right. Okay, that's all. Tim has made some suggestions at various times, so you might want to reach out to him and ask him to send you his suggestions. Okay. Um, I, I think rather than defining solar within the solar bylaw, I think if you have the general definition section and you have s definitions as it applies to solar, definitions as it applies to marijuana, at least you can go to one place and find it. That, that's a, that, those are something we need to discuss, yeah, how we want to do that. That's the flip side. I yeah. think that if I'm going through the general definition section, I'd rather not be stumbling through definitions for specific areas that I'm not interested in. But those are things we can but, discuss. We don't, we don't yeah, even decide so them here. But all, all, I think all I'm saying for that is think about it. Mm -hmm. what, make, what, what makes sense to you? And we can, we'll come to, we, well, we have to come to an agreement and go forward with that. That's all. Okay. okay. So your, your thoughts are welcome. Yeah. yeah um, um, like, how, like how do other towns do it? Right. And, and I, I probably would, what, sir, what's your, Mike. your name? Mike. Mike. Um, Luke. concur with Mike as far as, um, this is a, this is a first, <laughs> <laughs> um, I've seen and, and in, with the, the work that um, the planning board that I used to work with, what they did was identify the definition section. Every definition was in the definition section and separated either by a box or a bolded words um, that said, this is related to structure, this is related to soil, okay. this is related to marijuana. So okay. that would be approach, I, I could live with that approach. Uh, yeah. I just don't want to have to climb through large scale solar down with uh, league soccer. Sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's fine. I mean, those are. <clears throat> excuse me. We're not set. I don't. At least I'm not set hard and fast. I'm willing to listen to what makes sense because sure. I can see an argument for both ways. I, yeah, I and I yeah. agree with you. And it's, if yeah. you could get a copy of that, sure, to share with us, that would be very sure. useful. I think. Yeah. Just uh, just so we could see some different ways. The one thing I think we did decide on that to avoid having to renumber the entire bylaw, uh -huh. we thought we would add definitions. Uh, we, we would retitle section one purpose and definitions. And purpose would be A and definitions would be B. And that way we don't have a ripple effect throughout the right. entire and, and bylaw. And we know that your definitions are in the first section. Yes. And you probably will never have to unless you're going through a massive amendment to rewrite the zoning bylaw, you won't have to address it unless you're adding new. Yeah, and then presumably at the same time, we would have a companion article to remove the definition sections from right. everywhere else that right. they apply. Right. If that's how we're going to do it. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. It'll be um, it'll be a lengthy article for sure. Or yeah. articles. Um, so I I just copied and pasted um, from what was in the 2019 work. The special permits, um, consolidating and standardizing language mm -hmm. specifications mm -hmm. requirements, yep. where possible to prevent redundancies and inconsistencies. What I've seen usually is um, you have your special permit section um, that discusses usually procedure, and you have a site plan, which is usually what you do for a special permit, right? So if you're doing a special permit, unless it's for like, a use. Um, you would normally have a, a special permit slash site plan review. Um, Which then, we do have. Right. Um, the, uh, the current special permit uh, section is buried in, uh, it's actually buried under administration and under Board of Appeals, even though okay. the planning board is the special permit granting authority for a lot of things. Okay. We grant more special permits than the zoning board does. And that, that's what I'm familiar with, planning boards that do yep. grant more special permits. But that's in section uh, 
six point two. Um, and of course, they would they would remain a special permit granting authority, but for, for what they do deal with. Okay. Um, and then, so if we go to number two under MS four, I have affordable housing, um, and as I, I mentioned to Jim when I got in, um, I had a meeting with the town administrator this afternoon in regards to the district local technical technical assistance that PVC is providing to do an affordable housing analysis for the town. Um, and so this this troubles me a little bit. Okay. We have 13%, mm -hmm. which is the highest in the valley. Sutherland has less than 1%. Hatfield has 2%. South Hadley has 12%. Mm -hmm. Are you asking us to increase the affordable housing, whereas we have more than every other community? No, so the, the effort and the memo that was written and accepted by the executive director um, was to maintain um, a number above 10%, just so that the you wouldn't have to go through any 40B comprehensive permits. Well, that's, that's understandable. Mm -hmm. But it's not being enforced. In other words, I think we're, we're doing our share of affordability. Mm -hmm. being 13%, like I said, is higher than Amherst or Northampton. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is a pretty high number, it, let me tell you. It is. I mean, it's, I mean, Hoyoke obviously is higher, but nevertheless, uh, there have been no sanctions against these other communities surrounding us mm -hmm. that have not even come close to the 10%. So I would rather not see us try to make it a lot easier because I think we do carry the uh, the affordable housing number in a pretty good we have situation. That, we have that looming threat of things coming off the inventory. Well, that's, but that's where the, the strategy should be focused on. Well, the, the looming threat, I think, is, is certainly a real one. But we have approximately 10 houses built per year, 10 housing mm -hmm. units per year. So in order to reach that 10% threshold, we'd have to have uh, if no houses came off, it would take 60 years for us to go below 10%. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, to, to your point, um, the, the request, I, I don't know. See, and, and it's also listed on the master plan implementation. Right. If you go through our master plan, it is, I don't think it's even listed in the things that the town would like to do. I think there is, there is a bullet point that says the maintenance of an above 10% SHI. Um, and the, the memo that was, as I mentioned, the memo that was um, given to the uh, uh, executive director is basically an analysis to maintain that number. It's not necessarily recommendations to increase density it's not recommendations to do um, you know any zoning changes or whatnot yep. um, it's mainly to look at I, I remember very clearly and I think this is consistent Joe that we we worded the language of the master plan to say explore discuss consider uh, examine not to implement so okay. I think it's fine to look at this right. I, that's cons that's consistent and we do have in our bylaws such that if you're going to put a subdivision of 10 more houses well, there's one ten percent or you know one house will have to be affordable mm -hmm. yeah you have it so yeah. it's going to be we we are I think covering our bases pretty adequately mm -hmm. yeah but but you know, it doesn't hurt to look. So this is but, one of those. The, this is money. one of those things that it's when the money is there for a specific purpose, we can't divert it to another purpose. So if the grant is to is to study affordable housing, 
and we have the grant, okay. we might as well study affordable housing okay. because there's nothing else we can do with the money. You keep saying the, the memo to the executive director. What exactly? So there was a, a letter draft. So when, when every January, the executive director of PVPC basically um, asks communities to submit letters um, for any sort of requests for studies or plans or um, various reports um, that PVPC staff would assist with. So the le letter came from someone in Hadley? The memo? It came from the town administrator. Um, and but, but you don't work for him, you work for us. Don't well, you? No, 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 no. He works for Pine Valley Planning okay, Commission. Okay. Um, yeah, yes. That, uh, well, <laughs> but he, in, in this particular contract, he worked for the planning board. Right. But that's nothing not to say that anybody in the PVPC office can't do work for other areas of the town of Hadley. As long as it doesn't come out of our budget? That's correct, right? right. It's just not yeah. coming out of our budget. And I just put this down there because in case there was anything that the planning board wanted to explore, um, based on the results of or what this report is going to look like, um, that's an option. Um, so. Because, and that's fine. Once again, as we go, Pioneer Valley helped us with our uh, long range planning implementation, mm -hmm. and we used to have a long range planning implementation committee. And if we had 26 items in priority, they would cherry pick, not necessarily. Our main focus is to preserve open space agricultural land sure. in Hadley. Why are we not addressing our number one concern that all our citizens okay. have, whereas this one is really low priorities? Which is Senior why, Center. why we took it back. That's exactly correct because it was a, you know, a uh, like a they thought they were a planning board too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bill is correct. So, so one question okay. I have, and yeah, I my records are not as complete probably as they should be, but um, the only other thing I might ask that you look back through the, uh, a couple of prior years and uh, because I'm sure there are there have been there have been a number of things on it and I'm not sure that some of them haven't just dropped off okay. or dropped into the crevices okay and um, maybe even um, there was there was something about TDR, and I wasn't sure based on the last conversation. I wasn't sure if that was yeah. Uh, we we, we decided that we TDR really is we, it's it's working for us. Really, not a whole lot we can expand it to, okay. because we need to make other zoning bylaw changes to use it in other air in other ways. Right. Um. So that's something more for the planning board to look at amongst with other town yeah, officials. Sure. Sure. But if um, I think and I don't propose to make it part of the work product, but I think it, it might be useful just to have, uh, at some point, just uh, maybe do a, a recap of what the various topics have been on the work project over the last, say, maybe to the last five years. But okay. More than that, it probably doesn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. But just if we had sort of a list of what, what had been on the work, pro uh, uh, work program, for the last five years. Okay. Um, I'm not proposing to add it necessarily, but just to I can, review it. I can prepare, yeah. you know, give you basically the past five yep. years. Yep. You have a Cut copy of that memo that was sent to the executive director? I mean, it involves us, but I haven't seen it of you. It doesn't involve it us. Doesn't involve it, us. It, it, it's, He's it's talking about part. it. He's talking about it. Was, it that's fine. It was, I, I was talking about it in regards to if the planning board wanted to explore any recommendations that the report would produce but, um, the, but it's not the, but it's not specific to the planning board unless the, there was one participation by the planning board would it be a separate process from so, this planning so board uh, you know it's, it's something about uh, uh, battle plans don't survive the first contact with the enemy the uh, uh, the work program uh, over the last uh, however number of years, uh, uh, if we get through one solid thing mm -hmm. by the end of the year with everything else that might come in, mm -hmm. and then vacation schedules, and we can't make it, or well, no, too late to get this for town meeting this year. Um, yeah, I, I think that there are uh, 
you know, if we have a couple of solid things here to get through, uh, I don't mind having extra stuff on there uh, as a placeholder, um, but I don't have, feel any compunction to say that we can't just, okay, that's, I, that's I, a lower I, priority. I see two things getting done, and beyond that, it's just going to be just superfluously touching it. MS4 has to get done. Has uh -huh. to get done. That's, yeah. a, that's an a absolute and definition is likely to get done for the for the spring town meeting. Okay. And beyond that, just, just I don't see it's getting much more than that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just stop. You know, okay. maybe after after when, once we get the uh, article for the definition, they start working on something else. But I think we're going to be. I, I think, think most of your time is already going to be used yeah. up. <laughs> what I'd like to do too, I think, is just share with you as as you mentioned. Um, you know the definitions, um, the the zoning bylaw that the the town that I used to work for had, I thought was a very good zoning bylaw the way it was it was organized. Um, so you know things like sharing the definition section with you, or even looking at rules and regs, and looking at some you know just kind of talking about it, I think is also helpful to conversation. Yeah. Um, whether or not it's tackled this year is you know. Like you're right, it probably won't be just because there's MS4 is going to be taking up a lot of the time. Um, but I think just keeping it on there, yep. just, absolutely, you know, and, and that's what, and that's why I asked discussion. about you know doing the a sweep five, through right. the sure. other past years so is whether there's something that should be just on the don't forget me, right? <laughs> yeah. um, but otherwise, you know. Um, that is the scope of services I should have a contract. In, in the future, just when you give us something like this, could you put a date on it when it was sure. prepared? Just when it's all to that um, I did want to talk to you briefly about the billing. Um, I know that because you're not the only town that's asking for the bill prior to June 30th, and I'm trying to work and anticipate the um, what the bill for the work that's going to be done between now and the end of the month um, will reflect. It will obviously reflect the hours that I, you know, that I'm here today for the planning board, um, as well as the MS4 stuff that will happen on Wednesday. Um, so what I will plan on doing is um, to include. And I, I, I did talk to the accounts person at uh, PVPC today and told her that I would basically give you um, what we plan on spending by the end of the uh, fiscal year, um, which will probably be uh, an additional six hours based on uh, attendance at a meeting and any work that Patty and I do. Get, give it, get us a bill, get us a, be a bill, even if an invoice, even if it's an email. Okay. Um, by no later than midday on the 18th. Okay. That way we can get a sign to get it into the uh, uh, into the account by the end of the month. And you know, it's, it's not going to, I mean, overestimate. Be on the safe side. You've got enough, there's enough money left in your account. Yeah. And you know, say you estimate 10 hours and you use five. Okay, so five is carried over to the next month. Not a big deal. Okay. Right? It's not like it's the end of the world if you're off by a couple of hours and you're going to carry it over. As long as make sure you cover your properly cover your bases, it can always be carried over within your within your office, for, for lack of a better term. Okay. Okay. Um, other than that, I think um, that was it. I did want to. I know we were briefly talking about the housing choice zoning. Um, I. I don't know if you know you can entertain my two-minute um, research that I did in regards to what that majority vote if if the housing choice zoning is passed. That was an initiative by the governor's office. Oh, okay. Um, so zoning changes that promote best practices for housing growth that would qualify for the simple majority threshold include building mixed-use multifamily and starter homes and adopting 40R smart growth zoning in town centers and near transit, allowing the development of accessory dwelling units or in-law apartments. A lot of towns don't allow them, so they would be, you know, they would have to probably explore doing, um, adopting bylaws. We um, allow it by special permit, but are they right. talking about allowing it by right? Um, it doesn't say. 
uh, approving smart growth or starter homes districts that put housing near existing activity centers, granting increased density through a special permit process, uh, allowing for the transfer of development rights and en enacting natural resource protection zoning, and reducing parking requirements and dimensional requirements such as minimum lot sizes. So, so how do you implement something like that in, say, Brookline? Or Weston. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> or Wellesley. No, no. Yeah. This, this is something that I, I read quite a bit of. I mean, I, I, I was bored this afternoon. So I went through a lot of the 40B actual wording, because these are all topics. 40B actually says that for those items, you can make them, the town has choices. And instead of requiring a two third majority, it can be by simple majority. You can make them special permits, or you can make them by right. Okay, and that would change. Those. You can make a, the, the zoning bylaws can be amended so that it's now by right to do those things with a simple majority, and all the special permits are gone. Or you could keep them special permits. It's up to the option of the town. However, they vote for the zoning bylaw changes, including the TDR and everything else. What Ken just said. I, that's that's good information. It sounds wonderful, and it sounds like communities are caring or the governor is caring until a proposal comes into your backyard, and we feel the heat. And if somebody said all of a sudden I want to see more affordable housing in a cluster, let's say we put it between West Street and Middle Street, boy the people came out will come out in droves opposing it but it sounds wonderful on paper so, so it, it, the is there a an earlier version like two years ago we said that you could vote by you vote by a two-thirds majority to reduce the required vote to a mere majority it was the local option to go to less than two-thirds right. that was for general bylaws across the board for zoning bylaws this one specifically said we're in the section, I forget what section it is, where it says a two thirds majority of the t city council, town meeting, or et cetera. And they specifically exempt the topics okay. Ken just said and said that the zoning bylaws that affect those items are now a simple majority. All other bylaws are still two thirds, okay. but those partic particular specific topics are simple majorities. Okay. Right, because it would change the, the 40A, um, the Zoning Act. So it would be self-implementing if it passes. It will just you know, rewrite 40A. Yeah, there was, I know in previous legislation, uh, proposed legislation too, it was um, also putting site plan review in, in, a zoning, in the Zoning Act. Um, that's not in this one. But it would be interesting to see how the state would regulate the site plan review process. Okay. Yeah. That's um, yeah. for another day. <laughs> Yeah, right. we'll see. None of this is passed at the legislature yet. Yeah. Right, exactly. Um, but otherwise, yeah. Well, what, what is your sense as to how the legislature is, is leaning? I on think this? It, it's leaning on passing it. Um, the governor, I, you know, I'm not necessarily talking as a political body. Is um, you know, he has been. This has been at the forefront um, of the housing. There's a lot of media attention to housing in the state. And um, I think it is probably more on Eastern Mass, uh, but I do think that uh, there is enough. You know, you make a will. very good point. It's for Eastern Mass, yeah. housing is critical. It's yep. and it's expensive. And the legislation cannot make affordable housing. If you want affordable housing, move to Wichita, Kansas. Yeah. Okay, you'll get a beautiful apartment, three hundred fifty dollars a month, and it costs fifteen hundred in North I, And I think the the um, the way it, the, the governor has been, um, you know, uh, proposing his legislation is that it doesn't necessarily address affordable housing. It's the housing shortage yeah. um, that there is not enough housing, and so um, changing the zoning law to allow for a simple majority to increase density or you know address multifamily housing um, again probably more 
pertinent in Eastern Mass. Um, that's what I guess the, he's trying to accomplish. Yeah, it has to do with sewer and a lot There's of infrastructure lot, yeah. and water. Exactly. And, uh, and obviously it won't affect Franklin County and Berkshire County are losing populations. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. See you in a month. All right. Thank you. Oh, uh, I'll see you next good. in two weeks. Jim. Yeah. June. June second. Okay. So a couple of things I just wanted to run to mention. You're you're planning on coming back on the 18th. Well, I'll be no. here. No. 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 The 19th is going to be the, uh, the but meeting I'll, with the. I'll email. send okay. the invoice uh, on the eight, by the 18th. And the contract. And I, yeah. So can we could vote. On yeah, that way we could want to contact okay. on the 18th and get it okay. signed. Okay. 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 I was just wondering for July 2nd what the enthusiasm of the board is for meeting in what is going to be a holiday week. Holiday week. Well, yeah. Well, that's. I. July 2nd. I'm sorry. To be honest, we may not have a lot to discuss. Well, if you could send us that when you buy. Send us the definitions you have. Okay. Whenever, so sometime yeah. over the next couple of weeks, or send them to Bill. Yeah, and the Bill town, town too. The, the, yeah, 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 I'll send you the info. And yeah, you know, perfect. you probably can expect just me sending something, All right, and you yeah, can share yeah. it at a meeting. Right. So, so I don't have to be it, present. It. Anything you send to the planning at Hadley MA, I automatically forward to the rest of the board oh, okay. without comment. Okay. So. That's the quickest way. Or you could address everybody if you wanted to. You know, your call. Yeah. Um, are I would say maybe you skip July second meeting. That's fine. And come back on August sixth. Yeah, for the for the for the full board, I'll I'll come back on the, the August meeting. But we'll, we'll set something up for Ms. Right. for 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 during July, so we can keep moving on that topic. Right. Okay. When are we going to be meeting with the select board? That's oh, July nineteenth, nineteenth. But that's the evening, and then we're so that's an evening meeting. That's the evening meeting with the board of selectmen. June nineteenth. June nineteenth with the board of selectmen. It's at, they're going to let us know because that hasn't been confirmed yet, but that was tentative. Yeah, that's kind of like some of the topics we're discussing here. Right. So it's. Uh, but this working meeting that you're talking about, that's during the day. That's, that's 11 o'clock in, in, in the morning. Yeah. That's, just, that's, just, that's the MS Ford yeah. dedicated. Right. That's, I think, the same day that we're going with a joint meeting with the that night. That, night. that evening. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, okay. Ken. Thanks, Ken. Thank you. Thank you. Good Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So. Okay. So we can still, we have. Uh, At the 18th, we can decide if we want to be in a second. Yeah. So I, I heard discussion of grant, but I've also in the past heard that we pay them. So we pay them from the grant. That no, we no, pay? no. Or those are two separate scopes. Two separate, two separate things. Grants is something that the board of selectmen. Well, we've actually applied for grants. We've applied. We applied for several grants. Um, about near the end of the year, give or take November, they start. They send the PBPC and another few other agencies will send out um, notices to the planning board, and then they get I guess slip and get it throughout the year that you know these topics are coming up. We have a, we have a pool of money. Um, we anticipate getting more. Um, we are accepting grant re requests for these topics, and they give us you know some number of topics. If something's pertinent to us, we apply. This year, I specifically applied on behalf of the planning board for the idea of this flood way that we had talked about a few times and the new flood map being drawn up. We were denied that request, but then when PVPC looked at it, because it affected almost every town up and down the Connecticut River Valley that belongs to PVPC, they decided to set a special uh, I guess I'm not sure what's a grant or topic that would help us research that and try to get some resolution to the concern, and in, including contacting different state agencies to, you know, how does this get addressed? So sometimes Pioneer Valley Planning Commission gets they apply for grants. They will apply to state or federal or not for profits for a grant to explore something. And then they get that pot of money and then they turn around 
and like Jim said, send out a notice that we have money available to study things. They also have um, this uh, district of local technical assistance is some money, uh, unallocated money they get from Boston. Um, <clears throat> and they solicit interest. They also have uh, a policy, each town pays a certain amount of dues uh, annually. It's a nominal amount, but it's a pool of money. And every town gets like, one request a year for something special. Um, we amplified that. Um, we had been working with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission really for, for years. And they had some grants, uh, for example, they had a grant to uh, uh, basically develop uh, a the, um, well, TDR. Um, they had a grant to develop agricultural preservation uh, options. And they spent that grant by working with us to develop a model transfer of development rights bylaw, which we adopted and which, as last I heard, is probably one of the more successful ones in the state for the volume of work we do. Um, so there, it's, a, it's a combination of sources of, that come into this. And then, based on our experience working with PVPC and how useful they were in preparing a turnkey document for us, um, and I knew that because I had been on the executive committee, um, and I was the chairman for six years, that um, they had explored an arrangement with another town in Hampton County where they provided basically the services of a, a planner without the overhead of having a town planner. And um, I talked to Tim Brennan and he had capacity in the land use department. So he was able, he was willing to dedicate a piece of someone's, a piece of the department's time to working with us. Since then, it's grown to the point they're assisting seven or eight other communities on the same basis as we have here. Lord, no. Yeah. No, they, 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 that, that has gone into a very successful program for them and for the communities that are involved in it. It's worked very well. So the 7500 that we give out at, play, at town meeting every year is specifically town money for Ken or whoever might be assigned to us to do these topics. Okay. Yeah. Long answer to your question. That sounds like a win-win. Yeah. Yep. So. Uh, we have a invoice to pay of, uh, for John for doing some, John Harrison for doing some of the minutes. We got to wrap, we got to um, um, clean up a little bit more, but it's one hundred sixty-two dollars. Motion to pay that. A second. Motion a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Jim, do you want to? Just for information, uh, I will say that uh, somebody is sending around solicitations to landowners. Uh, would you like to grow marijuana? Yeah. Would you like to rent us your land to grow marijuana? Oh, I know. I've seen it. Okay. Um, I didn't get one. No, I know. I know the. Uh, I don't want to mention any names, but the person we, we, we have been discussing that has the yeah. non-APR land, yeah. he showed me it. Yeah. And they're looking for a minimum of uh, four acres for greenhouses, cannabis, and something else. Yeah. And you, you got to read it in between the line, basically they want to grow cannabis and greenhouses. Yes. Did you see the article on the parents that I sent you about the cost of production in Colombia? Yeah. yeah. Was, was, was that yours or Mark's? No, that was, no, he was oh, the, the Columbia plus, one. I saw the Columbia. It's, it's the like 50 cents a gram to grow it down here, less. I know. It costs 4 to $5 dollars a gram to, here. So where are they growing roses now? Yeah. Columbia. Yeah. I know. That's, that's, that's what's going to happen to marijuana. Yeah. The, the Colombia and Ecuador. 
one business cuts 95,000 stems of roses a day and ships them all over the world. And uh, yeah, that's a lot of roses. That is amazing. The Lufthansa my wife, my wife's got a friend who's uh, in charge of marketing for a company down there. Okay. Roses. So Mark was talk. Yours was about overproduction in the the note. Colorado, Oregon, Oregon, yeah. 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 Someone gave us an answer as to how that happened. Apparently, there was a crop failure two years ago. Yeah. Right. And so the government interceded and allowed everybody to grow more, yeah. and it was just too much. Yeah. So it was government induced supply, oversupply. Yeah. So, Jim, uh, Jim and I went to the, Bill was there, oh. uh, the floodplain. Oh, flood insurance? No, no, flood, the floodplain meeting where there was a lady from Do Massachusetts. She yeah. was. Massachusetts, that's FEMA, talking about MEMA. Um, what? Me MEMA in Massachusetts. Yeah, Massachusetts. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. But she, she was talking about the flood um, flood maps and, um, you know, basically how they're, they're going to be doing some surveys, they're going to be doing some of this, some of that. And it was pretty informative. And that, you know, they're going by elevations not by word of mouth and you know that that's fine in some cases but what they also got to realize that in some places there's a dip here sure that's probably in the floodplain some lowlands but it's surrounded by highland they'll never get flooded and that lowland is considered floodplain and there's a, there's a number of those in the uh northern end of town well there's probably a few around here too What's the uh, the method of mapping that's going to be much more accurate now? There is evidently GIS. It's an axial something. Oh yeah, it is how they are taking their photos, and they're combining an altitude measurement when they are doing the photo overflights, and that goes into the GS GIS system. But it's um, yeah, there was a, a term for it, but it it can map yeah. the. The flyover can map ground height to, a, to within a foot. I yeah, think. we just got that on campus at UMass. We've got drones that just have amazing accuracy. Yeah. So I mean, no, there, and and you know, I mean, it's going to be hard to dispute if they've gone through and got some reasonable measurements here and there. And but the bottom line is, there's probably going to be some land. There will be some people that say, my land's not in floodplain. Well, it probably is. Yep. Well, we're working from a 1978 base map at the moment, right. which was an overlay on uh, a combination of overlaying 1978 vintage aerial photos on a G uh, topographic map. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. USGS. And then there was a lot of politics involved in drawing that up to Yes, it. there was. So those are the ones. Well, luckily, a lot of those people may not be around, right. so there may be a little bit, a little bit fewer yeah. upset people, but there will still be some. Now, do we want to even discuss some of the implications of uh, the potential suit that the town may have by not enforcing some of our bylaws along the uh, floodway? Well, or should well, she, we she, not she, even discuss well, it? I would, I would just go over it really briefly. She did talk about, you know, she talked about camps and trailers and such and such in the floodway along the Connecticut River. And we talked that we have a, a zoning bylaw addressing um, new encampments that are not grandfathered. She said, well, that's good. And she's, and you know, we said it's also difficult to enforce. And she understands that as well. She says, just realize that if somebody has a camp, an illegal camp in the floodplain, and it gets washed away, and something happens to those people. The town is could be liable for the damages because you're not enforcing the bylaw, and if you have a and for that reason, you could be liable for anything that happens to those people. We might want to get a second opinion from town council right. on that. That yeah. was her. That was her opinion. And is encampment going to be in the definitions? 
There are well, these are trailers, trailers right there. Yeah. In other these, words, these are summer trailers that you somebody was mm -hmm. grandfathered in for seven trailers in the southern part so, of town. Now they probably have fifty seven. So we do have a section of the bylaw that regulates um, recreational vehicles along the river. So someone we have a lot of people who will drive in with an RV or tow in a trailer, park it, in. Park it for the summer, visit it every weekend or what have you, and then haul it out at the end of the year. Um, that was not previously allowed. We do have a bylaw that allows it, uh, but virtually, I'd say virtually none, there may be a handful that are, uh, that are actually per properly permitted. And that's through the ZBA. But again, we don't have zoning police going around enforcing these, but the recommendation certainly was that if you don't, FEMA will, and uh, failure to enforce is something that FEMA does not like. And you would lose the ability to get federal flood insurance for houses in the area, you would lose the ability to borrow from a bank, and you would lose federal funds if they were available to a town. So the sanctions are pretty severe to the town. There, there, there's a you know there's a whole bunch of things that she was talking about. But like it, it was informative, and she was yeah. she really was she was not she was not threatening by any stretch. No, she was you know, she was very, yeah. very 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 polite. But she says, you know, these are possibilities. We asked what could what could happen if yeah. you don't, and she mentioned some things, and you know, just realized that it's possible. Um, so so it's something that someone will be looking at. Right. Yep. By the way, the meeting I was late to several weeks ago, I watched it on YouTube. I think I mentioned to you, so I need yes. to get a piece of paper. So there so. is a form. I thought I had it in my notebook, but I couldn't find it. Um, I'll look, I have another notebook. I'll, I'll check. That's why I asked him about height. Yeah, the, the form for saying I've reviewed the, okay. the, yeah. pros, the, the minutes. I don't know, Jim, regarding height, we should double check with the fire chief. I, I'm sure the ladder can reach the top of it. Oh, the ladder can reach. The top of that building. That's not yeah. a problem. That, I mean, I think they can go quite a way, especially the new one. Because yeah. they got two. I think they still have. The, do they still have two ladder trucks? I think they do. What? I think they do. I think they have the old Amherst one in there, and I, I think yeah. they have. Like, yeah. I, I hardly ever see the Amherst one being pulled out, but I I've seen the new one going around. That can go. Yeah, you know, that can go forty-five plus feet. I think. Okay. Maybe higher. Uh, sorry. sorry, not, but. Uh, Irene Russell passed away, or wake is tomorrow. I saw that, yeah. Okay, I have nothing else. I have nothing I have anything. else. Motion to adjourn? Oh, uh, we'll what? say just one thing. I, I did, uh, it was apropos of something Mark said at the last meeting, uh, I did file all of the decisions that had been pending, but um, yeah, it, it was a, a little. Uh, Someone was making allegations that there was something improper about the pace of filing the decisions. And I just wanted to say for the record, the uh, night in question, we approved three separate projects. And I was not going to file one decision out of sequence with the others because someone was complaining. Uh, you know, it, this, is a, this is the system we have. It's not perfect. I wish I could be quicker on the turnaround, but I'm not going to process one person's application because there are threats and complaints ahead of the two others that were decided the same night. It waited until all three were ready to be filed simultaneously, and that, that's what happened. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you, and thank you, John. <laughs> no, Bill's quote about what was